Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Stunners channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary, this time for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the beautiful map Forts of Eisen, which is by the way the most popular map in all Battle for Middle Earth games. On the right side of the map we have the red Gonzo player Stony, and his opponent at the left side of the map is the yellow model player Drefan. This is a El Clasico matchup good against Evil Gondor, against Mordor, Gunself against Witch King. Before Orc Pit start, obviously, uh, that's gonna be the start of Mordor against every single faction in Battle for Middle Earth 1. And he's also gonna start with the Gollum. Gollum is a great choice early on against those soldiers. You can actually pressure them, you are faster than the soldiers. Yes, if you know they can fight you back, obviously, and if they do, you will lose a lot of health. But Gollum is actually surprisingly tanky, guys. So you can stall a lot of time, and I think time matters a lot in Battle for Middle Earth 1, especially in the beginning of the game for the Mordor faction. Because as Mordor, your goal will be always to keep, uh, to keep your Lamer Mills alive as long as you possibly can. This is very important because you start with an Orc Pit in your base, so you have zero resource income in your base, and you rely heavily on the resource income from those Lamer Mills outside of your base. The Hobbit is gonna be splitting from those soldiers. By the way, the Gondor player was splitting his soldiers. He was, you know, sending one of them to the bottom side. The second one, however, is gonna grab those settlements, those two farms, at the top right side, but also close to the base. And he was only moving with one soldier battalion and the Hobbit. Normally, you know, to grab the settlements, you are using the Hobbit, and then you pressure actually with two soldiers at the same time. Now it's gonna be, you know, incredibly difficult for the Gonzo player to deal the damage he's looking for. Smart move here from the model player. Moving with the Lumber Mill workers because the Hobbit was trying to kill them. Remember, the Hobbit can always one shot those Lumber Mill workers. And unlike every other resource building in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you can't generate any kind of resources with a Lumber Mill if you don't have any workers working for that Lumber Mill. You know, he has a lot of orcs now on the field. I think he won't be even using the heal at this point. Because, you know, it's kind of pointless, Mordor player smart, he was not picking anything just yet, because if you use the Eye of Sauron too early, Gonzo player can always use the Elven Wood. That's why most of the time, you know, Mordor player is not gonna choose anything, and wait for the ability of the Gonzo player first. He's gonna go for the Eye of Sauron now, the Gonzo player is not choosing anything just yet, Eye of Sauron is gonna be used to reveal the Hobbit, you know, obviously, it's not only gonna give you... Damage power, 50% more damage and 100% more armor, no. He's also gonna be able, I mean we are talking about the Eye of Sauron, to reveal the stealthed enemy units. Okay, pretty good start for the you know, model player, he didn't lose anything. He has no Lumber Mills around this side though, so he has to definitely make some of these. Heal is gonna be picked, he might be using that on these soldiers potentially, but I think it's just too late and it's not gonna do much. Might still use it and hopefully, you know, hope for the level 2 battalion of these soldiers. But now it's just too late. And he has already the Gondor Knights on the field, so, you know, there is no point of using that on these soldiers anymore. And Moro player, because of the great start, he was able to fill up his space with 4 slaughterhouses already. Just making sure to make some defense with those 2 towers. If a 3 farm start from the Gondor player, this is something you can always do against Mordor, because against Mordor, you don't need early upgrades, like against Isengard, or against Rohan, or against Gondor, as the Gondor faction. That's, you know, you can always go for more farms, they are not only cheaper, but they have also the food bonus, which are making your Gondor Knights cheaper overall. They cost now normally 800, but now only 600 resources each. Beautiful. So he's gonna use one of the Gondor Knights to pressure the Slammer Mills, which is the most important part, and the second one is gonna be used to creep. Now Gondor has some different, you know, options, but most of the time, if we see 3 farm start from the Gondor player, he will not go for the upgrades, and he will also not go for the Elven Warriors. You know, at this stage of the game, it is pointless, because Mordor had already a great start into the game, and because of your blacksmith being made very late, um, this is gonna take a lot of time until it hits level 2, and without Forge Blades, it's gonna be kinda pointless to rush to Mordor base. Mordor player was already able to secure one creep, Gondor player is gonna be able to get the first one, but also the second one at the bottom right side. Actually, the start of the Gondor player was kinda delaying the creep of Mordor quite a bit, which is pretty impressive. Normally Mordor should be easily able to creep like 2, 3, 4 Warclayers even against Gondor, 
it was only able to do two creeps so far. And I think all the other creeps are gonna be secured by the Gondo player. Pretty nice. So eventually Gonzo player will have full map control until the first mountain troll is gonna be joining the battlefield, which is gonna happen pretty soon. He was also able to fill up his space. And I'm assuming he's gonna try to go for the Gandalf. For that, you will need Gandalf the White Powerpoint abilities from your spellbook. Because if you don't have the Powerpoint, Gandalf is gonna be completely useless and not worth spending 6000 resources at all. He won't be even able to get on his horse, guys. Gonzo player is gonna capture the outpost at the bottom left side. This is the best way of denying Mordor doing that, but I think it's just too late, because the troll is already on the field. And if he sends the troll straight to this outpost before the first archer is gonna make it on the field, he can easily take it down. Two power points collected now, he might still go for the Elven Wood, I mean Elven Elias potentially, let's see what he's gonna be going for. Oh, you know, not, not the hobbits, Gollum. <laughs> he looks like a hobbit though, for my defense. We have no more creeps left on the map for Sovizen, guys. Uh, Stable is level 2 because he has 3 Gondor Knights under his control. The Archer is gonna make it potentially on the field. He can always put the Hobbit inside, you know, during the time. Hobbit with the Rock dealing surprisingly a lot of damage to the Trolls as well, especially if he's only, you know, alone. But I think with 2 Trolls he can still easily take it down before the Archer can, you know, makes it out. Because with the Archer inside the Outpost and the Statue giving leadership, those archers are gonna, you know, deal 100% increased damage, which is gonna make it almost impossible for the trolls to deal with the outpost without the drama troll. But he needs to put them inside now. He has only the hobbit inside. I don't know what he's going for. Maybe he wanted to send the um, archer battalion to the top right side and put them inside there. But he will be losing the outpost for that. The statue is gonna get demolished. Very smart move here from the model player. Now we have a two versus one situation. Trolls. They should be easily able, they deal a lot of damage against pretty much everything. They deal even a lot of damage to Balrog, by the way, guys. And the outpost has been taken down, the Hobbit is gonna be taken down with one hit. Uh, but they are not level 2 yet. It's not a big deal because you can always use the Find an Orc to eat ability and then sustain them to full HP again. Now, as expected, Gondor has almost full map control, but that's gonna change very soon. Motor player was able to capture this outpost at the bottom left side. That's gonna boost his industry with three furnaces. Now he's gonna go for the Haradrim Palace, which is smart. You can make Haradrims and put them inside the outpost as well. This way you don't have to be camping with your trolls around this area. And the mountain trolls are gonna chase down those Gondor Knights. Make sure to get some Lumber Mills. You don't, you won't get the full map control with only trolls. You know, you will need Nazgûls or Witch King for that. But at least two, three Lumber Mills, and I think that's absolutely fine for the Moto faction. If you have like three Lumber Mills under your control, you will have a great amount of resource income. Okay, almost Elven allies power points, but he's not gonna go for that because Gandalf the Grey is on his way. And once Gandalf is gonna join the battlefield, Gondor player is also gonna go for the power points. And Gandalf is the best hero in the game, guys. You know, he's gonna one-shot those mountain trolls with his easter light. He's gonna one-shot them with the lightning strike as far, you know, as long as they don't have leadership. But if the trolls have leadership with the drama troll, with the witch king, they will be very powerful, boys. Very, very powerful. One power point collected afterwards, he can always go for the elven wood. You know, just use it if the model player is using it first. To cover the land, he's gonna eat one of these orcs, has now full HP. But now at this point, the model player has to expect Gandalf. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because look at that. Gondor player has not purchased upgrades just yet. And he was having full map control for a long time. So model player has to expect, okay, Gondor player will have a lot of money now. And I have to expect a Gandalf. I need to be a little bit more careful. And there he is indeed, guys, on his shadow, <coughs> on his shadow facts. The white rider Mifrandia, who are saving the Middle Earth with the hobbits, you know, Frodo, Merry, Sam, but also Peregrine took. And that's what I mean, you know, when they have leadership, they won't get one shotted. This guy is level 2, but he has to be careful. He can always turn on them. Beautiful, very well done here with Gunzelf. He was just, be, you know, being able to finish off this troll. After the Easter light, he was using the Wizard Blast. Lightning Sword has been kind of cancelled or missed. He was able to get the power points for the industry. He's gonna use it once again. He has collected two power points already afterwards. 
has around 1200 resources collected so far. He will need Witch King, but he will also need some more trolls. You know, at some point of the game, if you play too passive against Gondo, you will have to camp. Like, this is how this matchup works, guys. You will have to camp with your trolls inside your base. You can always go for a devastation once you have 4 power points collected for a little money boost. Which, oh, that's a mistake from the Gondo player. He was just losing a battalion of Gondo Knights, just like that. Um, but he has a great amount of resource income. Look at this, two farms are level 3. He has farms left and right. He will be now able to take down this outpost first. He might go for the archer range once again. You know, but that's what I wanted to say. It's much safer if you go for the production buildings, in this case buildings you can recruit from, you, you know, units from, in your main base. Because there they are, you know, protected obviously, because they have to kill your walls first, which is gonna take them a lot of time. And going for a production building like an archer range around the outpost is kinda dangerous. I like the way that the model player is not camping inside the space. He's gonna play offensively with the drama troll around, those trolls are gonna be tankier. And they will also deal quite a lot of more damage. Uh, but the base of the Gondo of the model player is unprotected. And the rush is gonna potentially happen. However, if the trolls are charging, they will be very fast. But keep in mind that the trolls, they are fast, yes, when they are attacking something, but the drama troll isn't. So you need to make sure that the drama troll is always around your trolls. This way you have the leadership unlocked. That's a very nice attack from the Gondo player. And the troll cage has to get demolished. There is only one, you know, drama troll on the field, guys. And if he is going to be able to take him down, those trolls, they will be very weak without leadership. It looks like he's going to go for a Nazgul or potentially even for the Witch King. Let's see what his, you know, what his choice is going to be. He's also only half a power point away from the Devastation, which can, you know, insta instantly boost his money by 2,000 resources. This might be helpful to get the Witch King on the field instead of the Nazgul. Nazgul is very, very vulnerable against Gandalf. Because only Easterylite is gonna be almost bursting him down to 0% HP. And the combination of an Easterylite and Faramir's Wanding Arrow is gonna be enough to one-shot a Nazgul. That's why you ideally should be saving for the Witch King, who will have much more resistance, especially against Faramir. Gandalf is almost level 6. Yes, Easterylite and Lightning Sword are available. Those two abilities are gonna be the most useful abilities against Mortal Faction. You know, Wizard Blast is gonna do little to zero damage. To the trolls. Um, he has now 4 power points collected which can be invested into Devastation but you can also skip Devastation if you think you don't need it because your power spike is gonna be obviously once you have the 6 power points collected after the industry which will unlock the darkness. Rama troll is surprisingly tanky, much tankier than those mountain trolls but he's very low and he's only level 1 so he, will, he won't be healing up over time and unlike a mountain troll he can't also eat a orc to heal. Moro is fighting for the map control, that's what I like to see, but the outpost at the bottom left side will be taken down. I mean, you can always dance around like this, because he's playing surprisingly, you know, aggressive with his trolls and he has nothing inside his base. He's not even filling up his space because he doesn't want to waste money. You want to get Witch King on the field as soon as possible. Witch King is going to change the outcome of the current situation big time. You will have a really mobile hero. Gandalf only can kill him if he hits Lightning Sword and Easter Light at the same time. Not at the same time, but you know, you have to hit obviously Lightning Sword first or Easter Light first and then you need to also hit the Lightning Sword if you want to be able to take down the Witch King of Engma. Alright, we have a level 3 archer range, he's gonna get some rangers. Rangers are the best archers in Battle for Middle Earth 1, they are the best archers against monsters, they are the best archers against the Mortal Faction, trust me on that one guys. However, unlike Rohan, Gondor lacks of leadership. So in order to be stronger with those rangers, you need to get Boromir on the field and get him level 4, which means only you will need one rank. Once you get Boromir rank 4, you will unlock his passive leadership which will increase the damage of the Norway allied units by 60%. That's gonna make those rangers deal massively more damage, especially around the area like this. They will hit like an absolute truck. And even the Witch King can't withstand the damage, guys. Trust me on that one. Right, he's gonna reveal the troll cage after the Witch King. With Witch King and Drama Troll, those trolls now they have 100% increased damage and 100% increased armor. You know. 
Double the damage, double the armor. Sounds reasonable, but it is the truth, guys. Trust me, they will be now very tanky and Gandalf will struggle to take them down all alone. That's why you will need the spot of the rangers. By the way, the rangers are being able to get stealthed around the trees. That's why you are also able to use hold fire. This way they won't automatically shoot. And as long as they are around the trees, they will remain stealthed, guys. Beautiful. Outpost here, two level two blacksmiths. There is only a, there is a ranger battalion inside. I like to see that. Witch King has to be careful. Those rangers are gonna hit very hard. But he can always fight for the map control, try to kill some farms, try to fish some power points because before the model player should go for an attack, I'm assuming he has to wait for the darkness. With the darkness, the trolls are gonna be even, you know, tankier and even stronger than they are than they already are at this point of the game. And it's gonna be much safe, you know, much more a safer choice, in my opinion, for the model player to go for the attack with the maximum amount of leadership model faction can offer. You can also go for the marketplace, that's what I wanted to say. Yes, already purchased the Grand Harvest, which is gonna increase the resource income from those farms inside, but also outside of your of, of his base by 40%. He's going for the Iron Ore next. That's gonna increase the amount of resources from those blacksmiths. I believe by 15%, if I'm not mistaken. And he's also gonna go for the Siege Materials, Destroyed Structures, Refund, 50% of the cost. Player must have a marketplace to use his upgrade. But unlike you know any other structure in Battle for Middle Earth 1, if you want to use the upgrades you have purchased on the structure, you also have to keep the structure, you know, alive. For example, if you have a fire up, you know, fire upgrade purchase already, you can demolish your archer range and you can still upgrade your units with the fire arrows. Witch King is gonna fight for the map control, Gandalf can't be everywhere. And the Witch King obviously flying heroes, eagles, Nazgûls and Witch King are the most mobile units in the game. Beautiful. So we have full map control for the Gondor player as expected. You know, model player as expected, camping in his base. He's gonna get some more trolls on the fields now. He's gonna wait. He's in a safe spot, guys. Even though the minimap doesn't, you know, look great for the model player. But his base is protected quite nicely. He has drama troll, he has witch king, and in the worst case scenario, you can also use the darkness. Which, by the way, is gonna increase the damage by 33% and the arm of by 50% of every single unit of the model player for the entire map for straight 3 minutes. That's quite a long time in Battle for Middle Earth 1, guys. Alright, uh, you know, Gondor player is scared, which makes sense, because those archers, they will need a lot of time to kill one of these trolls. And I think it's a smart move from the model player to wait for the second drama troll, because this one is already pretty low. If he would go for the attack right now, and, it, you know, if the Gondor player is smart, he would be trying to kill the Drama Troll first. Drama Troll is the best leadership you can actually have in the game. Gives you the stats of, a, of the Witch King, damage and armor, but on top of that you also gain 200% combat experience. Which is reasonable. Like, the Trolls, they're gonna hit level 10 in, like, you know, one second. If they kill Witch King, for, uh, if they kill Ganda, for example. And unlike in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, this, the leadership system in BFME 1 stacks. So with the Drama Troll, you have 200% combat experience. And then you can also add the Eye of Sauron on top of that, which is gonna give you a total of 300% combat experience. 300% combat experience. And those combos, if they ever be able to kill one of the units, and even if it's one Gundam Knight from the battalion, they will hit like rank 5 in a second, guys. Trust me. Alright, so we're gonna see the first big fight, Fiesta fight. It's gonna be a massive fight for the mod of player in my opinion. All he needs to do is just keep those combos alive. Gandalf is gonna try to go for a beautiful Wizard Blast ability here. So, you know, even Gollum is like, no, 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 you don't, you're not touching my combos, Gandalf, too, right? He's gonna get trampled down and potentially die. No, he's actually surprisingly tanky, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Gollum is the man. Okay, the, the trolls are charging in, we have double drama troll now, they will also give leadership to each other, this way they are actually tankier. The trolls are not even receiving any kind of damage, this archers, they will need one hour to kill one of these trolls, guys. And he's not even using the darkness just yet. Imagine if he uses the darkness, look at this. He's gonna go for the... oh, there, there we go, that's the darkness, boys, that's the darkness. Gandalf has to cancel the lightning sword, because all it takes are two hits from these trolls and he's gonna be down. 
and it still kind of baits them into the outpost in my opinion, you will always need some reinforcements around this area. Even Elven allies can be summoned, he managed to kill only one troll so far and yet he lost everything beside his horses and guns off. And now there is nothing to stop these guys anymore and only one ranger battalion inside the outpost is not gonna change the fact. Going for a beautiful trample. By the way, oh, but the guns off. Look at this rank 10 combo instantly, guys. I'm talking about the leadership and he's gonna lose the Gondor Knights level 10 right after. Gandalf level 10? Also, I mean Gandalf ability, Gandalf leadership, that's what I'm trying to say all the time, is also around 200% combat experience. You don't get any damage boost from Gandalf's leadership, you get 50% armor, but you get also, like from the drama troll, 200% combat experience. That's why you are able to see some of, you know, some of the games when Gandalf is around the area, that the horses of Gondor player are level 10 most of the time, because the combat experience is actually crazy. And in BFME 1, the power spike of the units, you know, from level 1 to level 2, for example, is huge. Like, a level 2 unit can easily take down a level 1 unit. Like, I mean, it's not like they are only slightly stronger. They are, like, massively stronger. Look at the ranger's damage, guys. But the trolls are just, they don't care, guys. Trust me on that one. They don't care at this point of the game anymore. Darkness, Rama Troll, Witch King. The outpost is gonna get one-shotted. One of them is level 5, uh, every troll by the way is at least level 2, that means even if they are low, they will be healing up over time. The, you know, the leader of the trolls, there we go, this is the big boy, this guy is level 5. And I also love the fact that they look different once they are level 2, because the level 1 they only look like this, they look like a, like a peasant. Look at this, they look like homeless trolls, but this one is like the king of trolls, you know, they look much cooler in my opinion. Alright, outpost captured by the motor player. He can now go for the siege weapons. He's gonna go for the orc pit, which I like a lot. Because motor faction, if you lose units, you also get power points. So if you lose orcs constantly, you will receive power points constantly as well. And I think the goal of the motor player is gonna be to get Balrog summon as soon as possible. Which king is forced to retreat. Gandalf is gonna be joining the battlefield soon. We have also some siege weapons and they gonna deal a lot of damage to the trolls as well. Maybe he should just make Boromir, you know, and hope that he's gonna get somehow level 4. You can always keep your heroes close to your, you know, units. This way they can share experience. And by the way, Boromir is also a great hero against trolls. Because he's passive, with his auto attacks, he has this little knockback. Or, you know, knockdown. He can always constantly knock down the enemy trolls. This way you don't, you know, he doesn't deal too much damage to them, but he's disabling them, crowd controlling them, and this way you can actually... You know, get some time for your rangers to deal the damage to burst down those trolls. And once Boromir is level 4, the damage boost is gonna be insane. And your rangers are gonna actually deal damage now. Alright, uh, Moto play is, re you know, reclaiming the map control in the map for Survizen. Fighting with the trolls, with the orcs, with the witch king for the map control. He has a great amount of resources right now. You can always go for the second Nazgul and even for the third Nazgul and use them only for the map, con map control fights. You can always chase some Gondor Knights left and right. And the good thing about the Nazguls but also about the Witch King is, even if you lose them, you can revive them for free. Like, that's the truth, guys. They don't cost anything when you want to revive them. Witch King is full HP, so he doesn't need to be too much scared about the current situation. Because again, like, you know, explained before, Gandalf will need to hit them with Easter Light and with the Lightning Sword. He's gonna use the Easter Light first, which is a single target targeted ability, so you can't miss it. Lightning Sword on the other side is a skill shot. You need to aim it and you need to actually hit it. And if the opponent is paying attention, it's incredibly hard to hit the Witch King. We have Industry available once again. Darkness is gonna be available for the next fight. And I like the move here from the Moto player. But what I don't like about the fact is that he's moving with his entire army, and I think that's not even necessary. He's, you know, kind of underestimating his own power and overestimating the Mordos, uh, the Gondor's power right now. Like, he has three combos moving with all of his trolls and even the Witch King to one unprotected outpost. Yes, he doesn't know what we know, he doesn't see the outpost. Oh, but look at the Witch King damage. I, I think, yeah, the, okay, yeah, I take it back, that was Gandalf before, not the Rangers inside. It would be kind of crazy. The outpost is gonna be just easily taken down. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention this one. The Gondor player was purchasing the Stoneworker upgrade. 
That's gonna make those towers shoot like lasers. They're gonna deal massively more damage. And even those trolls with this much leadership, they will receive also a lot of damage from these towers. Like, that's gonna be... That's the most tilting thing about Battle for Middle Earth 1. If the Gondor player is camping like this, it's very hard. But on the other side, Mordor, play, Mordor Faction is the best tank destroyer, or, you know, camp destroyer. Because if you don't know, you can also go for the siege weapons uh, and catapults as the Mordor Faction. And your catapults actually having leadership from the Drama Troll. Drama Troll is the only unit in the game that does give leadership to the artillery units as well. Like, ends are even receiving leadership from the Drama Troll guys. And catapults, trebuchets, ballistas, even explosive mines, if I'm not mistaken. They deal much more damage. 50% more damage and 50% more tankiness means that a Gondor trebuchet, for example, has to hit the Moro catapult three times to kill it. And the Gondor catapult, I mean, the Moro catapult has to only hit the Gondor trebuchet two times to kill it. Can he actually hit it? Yes, he was able, but look at this. The damage is splitting between the orcs. Ah, never mind, he was still able to kill one of the Nazgûls. The Witch King should be obviously the target, but again, like mentioned before, the Witch King is much more resistant than a normal a normal Nazgûl, so it's much easier to kill the Nazgûl first. And I'll get him out of the way, but that's what I mean. Look at this, revive for zero cost, so he's gonna need some more time than a normal hero would need to get back on the field. On the bright side, you don't have to invest any more resources. The model player is gonna go for the double siege, which is necessary because again, you know, you don't want to underestimate it, you know, the campiness of the Gondor faction. With these towers around, it's gonna be impossible for the Witch King to approach the trebuchets and kill them because these towers are gonna hit like an absolute truck. And then if you get nearby, you will have to deal with the trebuchets with Firestone upgrade purchased. They are gonna deal massively damage to your trolls and to your combos especially. Combos are the worst units against trebuchets or catapults because they have no mobility and you can't most of the time dodge the incoming damage. Gandalf is only rank 7.5. He was only able to kill one Nazgul so far, the Witch King, and that's very important for uh, Drefan. has to be alive constantly. Uh, half of the map is under control from the Red Gondor player Stony, and half of the map is under control from the Mordor player Drefan. The industry should be used already, like, use it as soon as it's available, guys. It's a nice money boost, it's gonna increase your resource income from the selected, in this case, slaughterhouses by 100%. You can only use it on 3, that's the maximum, if you have a base like this. But if you have a camp, like on the map Anorian, you can actually use it on every furnace slash, you know, slaughterhouse. Okay, he's gonna go for the base rush. Nice one here, killing those slaughterhouses with the trebuchets on the backside. They have also no protection, only one ranger, that's not gonna be enough. The elves, look at look at the tankiness, he's killing more of his Gondor Knights than from his opponent actually. Gandalf has to be careful, we have seen what happens if, you know, Moro player is gonna try to kill him with the combos. However, he's not moving with his main army, he's actually trying to defend himself with like, little to no units around this side. Like he has one drama troll, that's all about it. The witch king can't approach this army, because there are some rangers on the field. And that is Gandalf, with the Easter Lights being available. The Rangers, they are very uh, damage heavy units, but they have like little to zero tankiness. Like they can't take any kind of damage. With Gandalf around, they will be kinda tankier, because they have now 50% increased armor when Gandalf is around. But you will, you wanna still be in the back line with your Rangers. You can't even purchase heavy armor on these units, guys. They are like glass cannons. Moro finally decides to retreat with his combos. Rama Troll is gonna move, and the trolls are also here. The charge has begun. And if the trebuchets are gonna land some of these hits on these trolls, you will see that they don't care about your leadership, guys. If the enemy has too much leadership, just get siege weapons on the field. Because the trebuchets, they are hitting like a truck. Oh, the eagles, but the eagles can approach them because smart move from the model player, not only sending his trolls forward, because eagles are one of the best counters to the trolls. But the combos on the other side from the model player are gonna want it everything. Okay, he can go for a potential wizard plus here if he has heal ability available. Yes, he does. It would be kind of risky, but the drama troll is kind of far away. During all this time, the rangers are dying very fast against those tro against those trolls, and once again, nicely defended. However, the 
Gondor player was able to deal decent amount of damage to the base of the Mordor player. He has now only 3 slaughterhouses level 3 left. He has the rebuild of, you know, Citadel. Now the Gondor player can actually go for the outpost and that's what I love to see. That's how we want to play against Mordor. And if you don't want to be in a situation like this as the Mordor player, you want to you want to have two armies. One of them is going to be inside your base, a couple of trolls, drama trolls and like one, two combat battalions. And the other one you will be using for attack. I think the mistake of the model player is that he's moving with his entire army from left to right. And unlike the Gondor Knights and Gandalf, these units are pretty immobile. They are very slow and you will need ages to move from one side of the map to the other side of the map. That's why it's so important to actually split your army, make two big armies. You can afford it because with the evil factions in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you have 400 command points available. While with the good factions like Forces of Light, you have only 200. And yeah, I think when you have like two combos around your trolls, it's more than enough. You will need, you don't need like four battalions of combos, in my opinion at least. But yeah, I think Drefan is a great Moro player. He knows what he is doing. He probably played like Gondo against Moro matchups 1000 times in the last three months. Not even talking about his lifetime. So he knows, you know, potentially better than I do what to do. The outpost is going to be taken down. He needs to demolish those structures, by the way. They are giving too many power points for no reason. And look at this, guys. Two and a half power points collected only. Uh, two and a half power points away only, I mean, from the Balrog summon. And Balrog is going to be very nice. However, Balrog is not unkillable, unlike Army of the Dead in those kind of situations. If you have enough trebuchets around your base, you know, in the middle of the buildings, and then around your base as well, you can actually one-shot the... No, not one shot, but you can burst down the Balrog easily. The Gondor player is also going to try to get some power points collected. He is still far, far away from the army of the dead. He needs around 6 power points still. That's quite a lot. Uh, at this stage of the game, because it is very hard for him to kill something. You know, you have seen this already a couple of times yourself. How, you know, how impossible it is actually for the Gondor player to deal with these trolls, guys. Maybe he can snipe, but the trebuchets are not protected. Uh, they are dealing quite a lot of damage. The Witch King has to be careful. I like the way that Drefan is playing very, very passive with the Witch King. That's what I love to see. He's gonna use the Lightning Sword, which was missed. Witch King is receiving some damage from these Rangers. But it, I think he's gonna make it out alive. The trolls are destroying them. Oh, the last attack. The Rangers, they have the highest attack speed in the game as well, guys. That's very unfortunate for the Mortal player. He was playing so safe with the Witch King all game long. Now Witch King is down and maybe Gandalf can go for a Wizard Blast. But he's kind of scared of these combos. And I can understand that. <laughs> I like the fact that both players are respecting each other pretty much. Like a lot. They are playing very carefully against each other guys. Both players they are trying to avoid making mistakes. Because at this point of the game it's all about avoiding the big mistakes that can cost you the game. Or that can give your opponent the momentum he needs to snowball his lead. Here we are getting some more trebuchets on the field. But he has 20 power points collected. And we already know what it means, guys. That is the time for you guys to leave a like on this video. And subscribe for more content like this. Alrighty. So he has enough power points for the Balrog summon. Um, which means he will be easily able to one-shot the base. And he has no trebuchets for protection. It, I mean, those towers, they don't hurt Balrog at all. Like, they will hurt him a little bit, but he will, he will have more, in, you know, enough time to survive and kill the entire base by himself. Like, the Gondor base is the easiest way to... Be, is, you know, I can't even talk. The easiest base to destroy for the Balrog. Like, it's much, much easier than the Rohan base. It does sound crazy because Rohan has less spots in his base than Gondor. Because, but look at the lineup of the Gondor base. You jump in, kill the Zitta, you make like two steps, and you can actually one shot the entire backline. One, two, three, four, five structures with only breath fire. And then you can you know, choose either side if you want to go there or there. And then with the second breath fire, you can you know, take down this side, including the rebuilding citadel, citadel, you know? Pretty easy. Uh, pretty, pretty easy. Okay. So we have. Eagle summon. Eagles are gonna be also useful against Balrog, by the way. He was just using the Golem to scout this area because in order to summon units, you will need vision. 
It's very important in BFME 1. And look, let's check this Balrog, guys. Luckily, Gondor player has a lot of money, so he can actually, buy, you know, rebuy the base easily. He has double outpost, so he won't even be defeated after losing this base. But he has to look at this breath fire, you see that? And he has to rebuild everything. And, you know, you can't rebuild a blacksmith, which is almost level 3. Like, that's not gonna be possible. You see how much time he has still left? It is so easy to destroy the Gondor base, guys. It is so easy. On the other side, I mean, you know, Gondor player is hoping that, you know, Moro player is paying too much attention about the Balrog, as he has to. Maybe he will, he will achieve something. He needs still around 3.5 power points with the Army of the Dead, which is quite a lot. Uh, look at the time remaining. I mean, just cancel that at this point. He's gonna cancel it, hopefully. When you cancel, you get money back. He has like 15,000 resources almost collected. So he can pretty much buy the base two times. He has finally also, you know, the brothers, the siblings, Faramir and Boromir on the field. They are both level 3. They come out of the Citadel level 3, but they were not able to receive any kind of experience so far. And during all this time, the Gondor Knights, they are gonna get chased down from the Nazgul and the Witch King. Rebusheds, Gondor player is desperately trying to get some power points left and right, but it is just very, very difficult. Gondor Knights level 10 are getting one shot from these trolls. Nice shot with the catapult. That was giving him around a quarter power points. And he needs that. One of the trolls, look at the damage the Trebuchets are dealing, guys, to this. Uh, oh, but he has to cancel it. That's what I mean. You see, even through his shield, he was able to damage that. Damage Gandalf. And normally, he doesn't receive any damage when he has the shield, the bubble. Which you, by the way, can't you activate yourself. It is a passive ability, which activates automatically. You end up running away from the monsters like trolls, for example. You wanna beat the trolls, potentially, for the eagle summon? Eagles are dealing sl splash damage. And in those kind of situations, if they are lined up like this, you know, it's much, much easier for the eagles to kill every one of them in like two seconds. I think that was a perfect opportunity for the Gondor player to use the eagles right there. He could have killed a couple of these trolls. And even if the eagles died, it doesn't matter because, you know, Moro players already unlocked the Balrog. At this point of the game, Gondor player has to try to get Army of the Dead as soon as possible. Because I do personally think that the only way of Gondor winning this one is with Army of the Dead. Like, you will need Army of the Dead and Eagles at the same time. Because the weakness of the Army of the Dead is you can't use them against Flyers. Like, he has to now kill, what, two Nazguls. Like, one Nazgul and the Witch King. That's why you need some Archers. You want to use Army of the Dead to kill the Trolls, slash Drama Trolls and Combos. Then you can actually kill the Nazgul or the Witch King or both of them. With your eagles, Gandalf, and some archers. That's the way you want to play that. I mean, Farami and Boromir are not doing anything, but for their defense, they can't do anything at this point. You know, they will just get one-shotted. They will not deal any kind of damage. Eagles, smart move, but... Also, demolishing this one was very smart, guys. You know why he did, why he did that? Because if you don't demolish that, they can run. Like they are running now to this farm at the bottom left side. If you, don't wanna, if you don't want that to happen, you can always demolish your farm, this way they don't, they don't have anything to charge. The goal of the Moro player was to get to the combos as soon as possible. He was, I think he lost like one troll for the eagle summon. One eagle got instantly one-shotted. Instantly. The Nazgul has to be careful, the easter light is available, should be able to kill him, actually. He still needs one power point for the army of the dead. And he has to get them right now. Look, the eagle is gonna die very soon to these towers and to these level 3 slaughterhouses. Very, very soon. He has to get some more catapults. And I think what the, you know, what the Gondor player has to do now is kind of make an anti-Balrog base. I think that's the only way if you want to win this one. Like, the, other ba the second Balrog is gonna be much more devastating. Because the resources now from the Gondor player are not looking, by far not looking as great as they are look they're looking. As, what kind of sentence was that? They are not looking as great as they were looking in the first Balrog summon because the fir first Balrog summon Gondor player had around like 15,000 resources, but now he will be barely able to rebuy the base. And again, every building inside his base are only level one. And the Balrog is almost back up. The Balrog is already back up, guys. And this w this time he ha has not that much money. That's the problem. He lost a lot of money right now. I don't know what happened. I think he was just making some more 
arches or something like this. I don't know. Okay. Uh, how many power points does he need for guns out? I mean, for army of the dead. He has not enough power points for army of the dead. Um, which can be used either defensively because army of the dead can kill Baldrock guys. That is possible. But I think you don't want to use it defensively because if you use it defensively, you will never be able to kill this army right there. You can't. Again, you will need bottom leadership. Okay, he's gonna use the Easter uh, Lightning Sword. And I think, you know, if you wanna be smart about your army of the dead, guys, you wanna be very, very smart. You wanna achieve something after you use it. You're actually killing a lot of trolls here. He's gonna use army of the dead now. You need to kill Witch King now if you can. Yes, Easter Light on cooldown. The trolls are charging very smart. Very smart move here. He's charging, trying to stall and buy as much time as possible. During all this time, we have the Balrog summon. And Farami almost got one-shotted from the summon all alone. Imagine him tanking anything here. Well, here the allies will be summoned next. The base from the model player is still in a safe spot. And that's what I was trying to say all the time. Like, you want to be smart about the way you use your army of the dead. Because it has a really long cooldown. Very, very long cooldown. And ideally, you want to attack him. And then force, his op force your opponent to go you know, for, a, for a big defense inside the space. Take them and then use the army of the dead <clears throat> inside the space. This way you can also make sure that the army of the dead is tanking all the towers and all the damage. And your main army can end up destroying the structures. Look, the Gondor base is gone once again. Luckily he has a lot of money collected still. He has a great map control. You know, level 3 farms left and right. And with the marketplace it's being super helpful. We can buy the base again. I mean, that's a crazy game. It's a fiesta game. But I think the Gondor player won't be able to destroy the base. I don't think so. Because Witch King is very healthy. There are not too many archers that can actually damage him. So Gandalf can finish him. The trolls are still remaining on the field. One of them is going to go down. The second one is going to be the target. And he's going to use the Easter Light on the troll. That means Witch King doesn't need to be scared about anything at this point. I mean, Lightning Sword is still a threat. But he has to hit him exclusively. A nice dodge here with the Witch King, but the Cita is going to be taken down. That's actually huge, because the model player doesn't have an outpost. And that's going to delay, if nothing else, the Nazgul. Model player has no more money left, actually, guys. I don't know about this game. And Gondor player, because of the map control he had, he was just able to buy the base once again. Like, this is crazy. I don't know why model player has no money left. He's gonna go for the scavenger. I mean, Moro has a lot of tools to boost the money in the late game. He has now all the power points unlocked. The Vestation was used. But the problem in the late game for the evil factions is that you're eventually gonna run out of trees. <laughs> like, that's the big problem, you know? Like, you need trees to use the Vestation. You need trees to harvest the trees with your Lamer Mill workers to get money. Now, you need slaughterhouses to use the industry on. So you rely on your buildings to generate more resources. As the evil faction. And especially not only on your buildings, but also on the on the map. Like, where are the settlements and how many trees are around the settlements? Besides scavenger. Scavenger means for every kill on the enemy units, you get money. But the base is kind of unprotected. It's a crazy game, guys. Like, Gondor player was how many times able? Like, three times able to revive the base. And I think it was very, win you know, easily winnable for the model player, in my opinion. He should be just using one of his Nazgul's to constantly fight for the map control. He was just leaving a lot of resource income for the Gonzo player. He was always grouped with his army. He was never trying to split the army. That's why he was able to, you know, to kill one outpost. But during the time, he was also losing, the losing his own outpost, you know? So he was always trading one for one. Okay, now there are no combos anymore, the trolls are gonna die to the eagles, the witch king is gonna be dying next, with the easter light. Yeah, easter light is gonna be able, not gonna be able to finish him, but the eagles or the archers, they might be able to do that. Heal was used on Gandalf and the eagles. You can also heal the eagles and anything you summon pretty much. You can even kill the witch king of your ally, or Nazgul, or Balrog by the way, you can heal Balrog as well. And that's gonna be the end of the game. Fantastic game from the players. I think Moto player had the momentum, had the chance to win this game. He was just making mistakes over mistakes and the biggest mistake was that he was always grouping with his entire army for no reason. Like the army was unmatched from the Gondor player. You, he could never be able to fight the army. And a great game regardless guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. 
If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more BFME 1 content in the future. You know, as you know guys, we have seen... We have uploaded many many times Rise of the Witch King or even BFME 2, but BFME 1 uploads were kinda little to no uploads in the last couple of months. Let me know if you are interested in more videos like this in the comments below. I see you next time guys, take care of yourself, have a fantastic fantastic day or evening or whenever you are watching this video. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace guys.